Today's message is an admonition to the believers. And by admonition, I don't mean to insult the intelligence of any. An admonition is both a word of encouragement and a word of warning, all at the same time. So the Lord wants to encourage us um, and to warn us. Um, and this particular message, I'll uh, be honest with you, is not as evangelical because this particular message, even though I pray that the, the lost get saved today, this particular message is not, uh, the Hebrew writer wasn't writing to the lost. Uh, it was, this letter was written to the believers. And, and you see uh, in verse 1, where he uses the word we. You see that? It says, first clause, we ought. We are obligated. Everything you ought to do, you're obligated to do it. We ought to give the more earnest heed. Now, no, now notice, just, just bear with me as I lay this foundation. Notice um, that the author does not, in verse 3, use the word reject but he uses the word neglect he says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation see sinners have rejected the word When the sinner hears the word of the gospel and they fail to accept Jesus Christ, you've rejected it. We open the altar and we say, come to Jesus today. And you say, I'm not ready. Or I don't want to. Or I'm not ready yet. Or I don't want to give up my good times. And I don't know why sinners believe that you have a better time in sin than you do in Christ. Amen. Well, we have a good time. You get to drink. You get to smoke, you get to do drugs. Well, those are things that weak people need to have a good time. We have a good time and don't need any of those things. Amen. Amen. In Christ, have a good time sober. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In Christ, you, I can enjoy a movie without drinking. I can enjoy an evening uh, with my wife uh, out, and we ride together, and we don't need marijuana. We don't need any kind of alcohol to spice things up. Amen. See, when you're a Christian, you don't need that stuff. You don't need pornography to spice up the bedroom. You don't need the world. See, we don't, we don't stay away from these things and, and begrudge them. We're in a place where we don't need them. We have someone and something better. And it's, and it's so important for Christians to uh, let the world know that we have something better. I've been in the club before. I've been in the club. I've been in the club. I know what clubs look like. I know what the club sounds like. All of them are dark. The music is loud. The air is thick with smoke. People are there with evil intentions. Praise the Lord. You might be there with your neighbor's wife. You might be there... Praise the Lord, looking for your neighbor's wife or whatever case may be. Most times people don't go to the club looking for salvation, looking for a drink. You're trying to get it on, trying to score drugs, whatever, and the music blasts, and there's uh, artificial stuff decorated everywhere to make you think that you're seeing what you're not, to, to, to create an atmosphere that's not real. Hit a button and smoke comes out the floor. You think that's something. You're impressed by that. Hit another button and the multicolor lights go to flashing and you say, wow, this is real. None of it's, this is good, but none of it is real. Then you meet Jesus and you find out that you don't need any of those things to have even greater joy than that. To be happy. Um, I love being a Christian. 
I'm happy in Jesus. I'm a proud, saved black man. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was awakened to the woke movement. I was awakened in 1977 when the Lord saved my soul. And I hadn't been to sleep socially since because God, the Lord, the Lord blesses you to know what's going on. Keeps you on top of things. So the sinner rejects the gospel. The danger here was that the saints, as a result of the manifold sufferings and temptations that they were going through, they were in danger of neglecting Christ, neglecting their salvation. You know, life can, if you let it, make you put salvation on the back burner if you let it that's that's what that's what uh, that's what the devil want you to do when you're going through your trials you're struggling financial last thing you want to hear somebody say is pay your tithe amen when you're going through and uh, um, you want you want you want relief and sometimes satan offers relief but that relief can be at the expense of your faith. You can be in a situation where you, you've been alone and, and lonely, and the devil can offer you the solution to your loneliness, but it comes at the expense of your faith. Amen. Have you ever been offered something the Holy Spirit said, you know that ain't right? Holy Spirit, God says, God said, you know that's not me. Now at that point, you have, you have a choice. You can either accept what the Lord is saying and, uh, and, uh, and go on, or you can, you can uh, neglect God. You can hear him and not hear him. Praise the Lord. So this is what the danger was. The danger was of the believers to whom this letter was written, the believers ignoring their salvation. That happens more and more now in the world. Christians, when it is, uh, when when Christianity seems to me seems to be inconvenient, it's easy for us to ignore the tenets of the faith. The Lord wants us to hold to Him when we're out of season. Everybody's in with Him when it's in season. But what do you say when you're out of season? When you're the only one who believes what you believe. Only one in the department where you work. Only one in the community where you live. The only one in the classroom where you attend school. The only one in your department who believes what you believe and you believe the Bible. Amen. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, the devil will talk you into trying to neglect it. See, we can't allow life. Are you hearing me? Life challenges we can't allow the world, careers, family. We can't allow ambitions, goals, or anything else to cause us to little by little, as a leaky vessel, allow our hope and faith in Jesus Christ to slip away. The text where it says, don't let them slip, uh, one writer said it's like a leaking vessel. There's a little leak. In the bottom of this glass and the water is seeping out just a little bit at a time yeah see it is the will of Satan for this thing not for you to leave Jesus broadside because some of you have been saved too long to do that but if he can just get, get put a little leak in there just a little leak before before you know it you have, you're half empty Before you know it, you're empty. Are you with me? Allow me to digress for a moment. And keep in mind that the book of Hebrews was written to suffering Jewish Christians who had given up Judaism, which came at one 
tremendous price because in the Jewish community, if you walked away from Judaism, one of the things that would happen to you is that you would be excommunicated from the temple. Well, what does excommunication mean? When you were excommunicated from the temple, that means nobody in the town would do business with you. So if you own the business, you're going to go out of business. It means that people in the city where you live would stop speaking to you. Now you're being ostracized. All of a sudden, you know, you're no longer invited over for dinner. You're not invited to the parties. You're not, you've, you've gone from being uh, a part of the in crowd to being on the outs. That's what Christianity would do. Pastor, it seemed like to me since I got saved, I have fewer friends. There ain't no seem like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that happens. And, 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 and in some ways, it's a compliment to you. Because when people see that you've really changed, if they haven't, and they're not ready to change, they don't want you around. You're in the way. See, I'm still, I'm still, man, still trying to drink. And there you go sitting there sanctified. <laughs> so they put the, <laughs> put the stuff in the refrigerator and hope that you will uh, uh, leave after dinner. But you're one of those guests that after dinner, you're still sitting there. And after a while, they're looking at you and looking at each other and looking. And they, they want to get to it, but they're trying to respect you. See, when you get saved, salvation changes you. And it, it, and, and it changes people around you. You remember when the man um, was healed who was congenially blind. The question was asked, uh, who, who healed this man? The man said Jesus did it. The authorities wouldn't accept that. Pharisees went to his parents. The Sanhedrin went to his parents. And they said, is this your son? They said, he is. Well, was he blind at birth? Yeah, he was. Well, how did he get healed? They, the Bible said, fearing the Pharisees, being afraid of being excommunicated from the temple. They said, well, he's grown. Ask him. Let him speak for himself. They were afraid to say, Jesus healed my child even though Jesus had. Isn't it amazing the things that we value more than Jesus? They valued uh, being able to have access to the temple, which gives them access to commerce and access to the community and keep them in the uh, part of the in crowd. Uh, uh, they, they valued that over just speaking up and saying that Jesus healed my son of blindness even though Jesus had. My position is, you took, the, you took the healing, didn't you? Amen. If you accepted the healing, you should accept the healer. Praise the Lord. Am I right, brother? Lord, the Lord saved me. So I, I, I accept everything that accompanies being saved. Not just the parts that the world likes. There, there are some things that Christians do that the world like. But then there are other things that Christians do that the world despises. The world doesn't like it when the Christians veer into politics. When Christians make their voices heard. Um, when Christians weigh in on the issues of our time. And then when we weigh in, you know what they tell us? Well, we say, well, uh, we'll tell you what the Bible says. And the world is quick to tell the Christians, well, leave the Bible out of this. No, no. If you're a Christian, you can't leave the Bible out. Mm -mm. Now, a, real, a true Christian can't leave the Bible out. When, when you leave the Bible out, you leave the truth out. Amen. You can't get us to weigh into no discussion about the LBGTQ community, and let's talk about it, but let's not get religious. Well, we can't talk. Because it was the God of the Bible who said that that's a wicked lifestyle. And I hadn't read anywhere where God changed his mind. So then I'm not going to change mine. When God changes his mind, I'll change my mind. Amen. 
Say, well, that sounds so harsh and so judgmental. No, that sounds biblical. What has happened is the world is getting you to allow it to leak. It's, that, that's the, that, amen. That's, that's the manifestation of the leak. I was talking to a preacher one day, and he referred to uh, Caitlyn Jenner as a she. And I said, that's a he. That's Bruce. When he was born, his parents called him Bruce. Everything about him is Bruce. And the man told me, accused me of trying to be deep. I said, I'm not being deep. I'm being truthful. You, you, that, that's the leak. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. See, when you, when you stand uh, for, for Christ, Christianity comes at a price. It comes at a price. And so the Christians to whom the book of Hebrews uh, were written. These born again Jews had been excommunicated from the temple, and oh my, they went from uh, um, uh, living the high life to suffering a little bit. They were thinking about going back. Um, I am somewhat intrigued as I watch, and I'm going I'm to preach in just a minute, um, uh, the evolution or the seeming evolution of Kanye West. I said last Sunday that if he is saved, I'm not going to judge his heart, but if he is saved, if the Lord has saved him, the best thing that he can do in terms of religion, the best thing that he can do is sit down, go somewhere and be taught because he don't know the doctrine and he's not ready to be on the front line because the world will rip you to shreds. And you know, and the true, the true test will come uh, 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 record sales will determine the whole thing. And, and a whole lot of them have gotten saved and loved Jesus until the record sales came back and uh, sales dropped off. And uh, Ticket sales at the concerts went from playing concerts of 10,000 folk. Next thing you know, you go there and 500 showed up. The next thing, the next thing you know, the man right back out there with the same group. Singing the very song they said he wouldn't sing anymore. Time tells. Because this thing comes at a price. And see, some, everybody's happy, but when it's time to pay the price, the question is, what will you do? Oh, my, you don't hear what I'm saying. But I'm as, I'm as right as rain. And this is the context of the book of Hebrews. This is the context of it. was believers who were paying a dear price for their commitment to Jesus Christ. But I will say this about Kanye, then I'm going to move on. I may offend some of you. I do, however, uh, like much of what he has to say politically. Uh, I find it, I find it uh, uh, quite refreshing to hear a brother um, just tell the plain truth uh, about certain things. You have to admit that it, it is, if you're not disturbed, you should be. I said this in leadership. A white person can be a Democrat or Republican or a Independent, and their whiteness is not questioned. Hispanics are Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, and their ethnicity is not questioned at all. Uh, as a matter of, uh, uh, but if you're black, if you're black, and if you're anything other than a Democrat, people want to know what's wrong with you. Now, the empirical evidence shows that it is not to our advantage to vote 90% one way. But when you vote 90% one way, you tell one party there's no need in pursuing your vote because you're not going to vote for them. You tell the other party you don't have to do anything for black people because they're going to vote for you anyway. And that's where we are. Kanye is right about wh how we have uh, the, he says, uh, uh, when asked, I want to read this, when asked about his infamous support for the U.S. President Donald Trump, uh, West took a swipe at Democrats, commenting, we're, talking about black Americans, brainwashed uh, out here, bro. Come on, man. This is, uh, this is a, uh, f f this is a, speaking of himself, he says, this is a free man talking. Democrats had us voting for Democrats 
with food stamps for years. What are you talking about? Guns, he says, what are you talking about? Guns in the 80s, uh, taking the fathers out of the home. Plan B, lowering our votes, making us abort our children. Um, you have to admit that um, for those who don't know, blacks make up 13% of the U.S. population. Our women, black women, make up 8% of U.S. population, and black women are responsible for almost 40% of the nation's abortions. 8%, 8% for 40% of the nation's abortions. That ought not to be. We don't have, we do not have, we do not have an abort our children gene. There's nothing wrong with us. Our women are not, uh, it is not that our women don't make good mothers. There's nothing wrong with our sisters. It is, however, it is a result of listening to the wrong ideology. The people who we trust the most politi politically are the ones who, every one of them, support abortion. The people who we di distrust, they're the ones who support life. And nothing, if, if there's no life, I say it all the time. Preacher, will you ever get tired of saying it? I'm tired of saying it. But since it's going on, I can't stop. It would be nice if I had a little more help. It, when you don't have life, you don't have anything. The power of a people lies in its numbers. If, you, if your numbers, if you do not multiply, you have no power. And that is what is going on. And so here's this brother who, uh, some of the things he said, I, I wonder, has he watched the broadcast? Because I could not. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with him, him more on, on certain things. We need, we need to live. And we need to, we need to, we have a right to live. Amen. And, uh, and it would be to our advantage. It would, it would serve the African-American community oh so wonderfully if our, our vote and our support was up for grabs. That if we didn't pay attention to the color of the politician, but to their policy. Whether you like their personality, their bolster, or whatever, their policies. The last time black unemployment was as low as it is today under the current president, we were slaves. And that ain't by accident. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. You won't hear that in most places. That's, that's tough truth. Abortion uh, under the current president have dropped precipitously. And when the brother was in who looked like us, it was peaking at all-time highs in the black community because a half a billion dollars of taxpayer money was being given to it annually. And what they, they took that money and aimed it at us. Now, if, if that is not racism, what is? See, so the world wants the Christians to be quiet. Amen. And if the Christians speak up, then there is a price for the Christian to pay. The book of Hebrews is written to say, pay the price. That's, that's the book of Hebrews. Just pay the price. Amen. It says God, the, the, tech, the context of the book is that before the price gets too heavy, in a little while he that shall come will come and, sh and, and will not tarry. Now the just, Hebrews chapter 10, shall live by faith. Glory to God. Faith. Faith. And he says, we're warned not to draw back. So this particular book is a warning to the believers to hold on. But allow me to digress just a moment. Are you praying with me? I want to digress and bring out something that I want you to know about the God you serve. 
Our God is ageless. Our God is the timeless God. Nothing changes him. Nothing weakens him. Father time has no effect on him at all. Jesus is the ageless Lord and Savior. In chapter 1, verse 8 says, remember we studied this Thursday night, but unto the Son, and the context here is that the Hebrew writer was showing that Jesus is superior to angels, but unto the Son, saith he, thy God, O God, is forever, and thy scepter, uh, and the, your, your throne is forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And here he was actually quoting, uh, the Hebrew writer was quoting from Psalms 45, and where uh, it is teaching that the king is God's co-regent. The, in the, uh, the, the thinking of the, uh, the Israelis is that the king was God's uh, man and that the king ruled in a, a, co a regent is a ruler who takes, who takes over on the behalf of the sovereign. So if the first, if the sovereign, if the leader is the, the pastor and in the pastor's absence, the first assistant steps up, then he is acting as the regent. Well, the, the context of a Hebrews uh, of Psalms, excuse me, chapter 45, where it was actually written in verse 6 and 7, it says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. It says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Well, the Hebrew writer took this text and applied it to Jesus Christ. When he mentions the scepter, when he mentions the scepter, a scepter is a, is a, a wand, a stick that symbolizes royal dominion. Its size and its shape varied in different times and different cultures, but it was often associated also, listen to this, with military power. So when you speak of the Lord's scepter, you talk about his power, and in some cases, the scepter was actually a military weapon. We all know that in ancient times, if you uh, came before the king, if you uh, walked into the royal court, if you spoke before he, he extended his scepter and gave you permission to speak, your life would be taken. Jesus still carries the scepter. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. So we see in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, uh, uh, 8 and 9, he's quoting from Psalms 45. Verse 10 says, And thou, Lord, 10 of chapter 1, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundations of the earth, the heavens are are the works of thine hands. Look at this. With all that you made, they shall perish, but thou remainest. That is, you will always be. They shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, <laughs> and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years fail not. Nothing changes our God. He's timeless. He's ageless. He doesn't, he doesn't lose a step. You know, I'm a sports fan, and over time, athletes lose, their, lose a step. The boxer is not as fast over time as he was in his uh, heyday so forth and so on. Well, we serve a God who is ageless. Amen. So he's, he's the same God. No wonder the Hebrew writer wrote a little later on 
uh, in his writings, chapter 13 and verse 8, he says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Earthly leaders may come and go, but Christ remains the same. Saints, put your faith in Jesus Christ. Bishops, pastors, come and go, but Christ remains the same. People uh, reach their peak in efficiency. Time causes all of us not to be as good as we once were. But Christ is timeless. Amen. Over time, no matter how good a person is at what they do, or no matter how beautiful a person may be, no matter how handsome a, 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 a man may be, or how beautiful a woman may be, in time, you will see that she's past her prime. He's past his prime. They're not as sharp, not as quick, not as able, not as fluid, not as good. But our God remains the same. This is why you have to put your faith in the Lord. You thank God for a good pastor. You thank God for good leaders. You thank God for good elected officials. You thank God for great parents. You thank God for great friends. But none of these are in your life forever. Life is transitory. Things change. But Jesus Christ is that, he's that one constant. Glory to God. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us and he never loses his shine. He never loses his touch. He's never past his prime. Somebody said the Lord's not moving like he used to. Yes, he is. People may not be believing like they used to, but, but the Lord has never passed his prime. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He, he's, he's ageless. As, the, as the, the centuries roll on, he's still God. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Then the writer in verse 13 and 14 goes back to the subject of angels. He says, but, but to, to which of the angels said he at any time, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? The answer is none of them. Jesus didn't give this to any of the angels. Are they not all his, his, his angels? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister? Look at this. For them who shall be heirs of salvation. God's angels are ministering spirits who are sent forth to minister for us. They work on our behalf, but we do not pray to them. We do not make requests of them. They get their marching orders from the Lord. And God knows how to send an angel. Brother Wilson was at the stoplight the other day while traveling for business. And a 18-wheeler hit the back of his car. But God sent an angel. And no danger came his way. Angels are fast. Praise the Lord. They, they do the Lord's biddings. And, and we, we, we studied earlier, uh, last, last week we studied that God makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire that is uh, angels are interchangeable beings angels can appear to look like animals angels can come to you in the form of a dog angels can come to you in the form of a person the hebrew writer said be careful how you treat strangers for some have entertained angels unaware you weren't even aware that that individual who may have been dressed like a bum. May have been dressed like a fireman. May have been your color or not your color. But was an angel of God. Be careful how you treat God's ministers. Uh, Jesus said that his angels, that our angels do always behold the face of the Father in heaven. They, they are waiting for the Father to say, go and take care of this person or that person. Don't let that plane crash. 
and they move. And uh, we're where we are today because God sends angels. And then concerning the messianic angel, the angel of the Lord, which is a, which is a, a theological messianic designation, which means Jesus Christ. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him to deliver them. Thank God for his angels. Thank God for his angels. But we're not to pray to him. We're to pray to Christ. We're not to worship them. I remember you I've read in the Bible where angels showed up and men fell at their feet and the angel says, get up. Get up. Get up. I'm your fellow uh, angel. I'm your fellow worker. Get up. You can you save that for Jesus Christ. Save that for the divine. In our text, let me close this out. I've preached. Uh, it, 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 I want you to notice something. I want you to notice uh, the consistency uh, here. Let, let me, before we go to uh, verse 1, I want to show you something. In verse 2, then I'm going to go back to verse 1. I know I'm preaching a little crazy today, but there's something that I, I want you to get. The Bible says in verse uh, 2 of, of, of chapter 2, I'm skipping verse 1 for a moment. Will you follow me? It says, if the word spoken by angels, was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Notice the consistency of the message and, and, and the comparison of the message. Now, in verse uh, 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 um, 1 of chapter 1, follow me now. Verse 1 of chapter 1 says, God who at sundry times, we talked about this Thursday night, and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now, in verse 1 of chapter 1, he's talking about how God spoke through the prophets. In verse 2 of chapter 2, he's talking about the word that was spoken by angels. You see that? The writer is saying, if the word spoken by angels to whom Christ is superior was steadfast, that is, was legally binding, if the angelic, if the word that angels delivered were legally binding, and what was the word, my brothers and sisters, that the angels delivered? Well, the angels were, were active in delivering the law to Moses. Acts chapter 7 and verse 53 says, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. The angels gave the law when Moses was on Sinai. Angels was involved in the law going from God to Moses. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 19 says, wherefore then serveth the law says it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Look at this. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The mediator was Moses. The ordination of the message was given to Moses by the hand of angels from God. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 2 says, And he said, the Lord, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shineth forth from Mount Paran. And he came, when the Lord came, he came with 10,000 of his saints. And his right hand, and from his right hand went a fiery law for them. Angels were involved in getting the law to the believers. This same law that caused the Hebrew recipients, the Jews, they were serving God through the law in Judaism. Now they have moved, stay with me, from Judaism to this new way called Christianity. And so the comparison 
that the Hebrew writer is making is, he says, if the words spoken by angels were legally binding, what word? The law. And every time the law was broken and every uh, disobedience received punishment for breaking the law that was delivered by angels, then verse 3 says, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which was not at first delivered by angels, but which was at first spoken by the law, who is superior to angels. So if the law that the angels gave to Moses was legally binding, how much more the gospel which Jesus brought himself are you following me oh my the words of christ certainly have to be uh, taken seriously if we took the words of angels seriously the big question is how shall we escape not if we reject but saints if we neglect so great a salvation to neglect my brothers and sisters is to show no concern to neglect is to be careless about. Praise the Lord. We must stay careful that we remain Christians no matter what. In every situation in your life, God expects you to come down on the Christian side of things. You can't let anything. You fail the test when the test causes you to neglect your Christianity, even if, even if you won the lottery. Praise the Lord, you got the ticket. You, you went for the ill-gotten gain. You went for something for nothing. And you got the $250 million. Praise the Lord. But it came at the expense. You had to neglect your faith. I'm not getting an amen now. I must have a lot of lottery ticket buyers. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And uh, do you see what I'm saying? Is it, is it taking shape? Oh, you, we've got to be careful that we not neglect. Notice what he calls it, so great salvation. That is, the, the salvation that Jesus brought was superior to all other salvations offered in the world. Islam offers a form of salvation. Other religions, other doctrines, other disciplines offer a form of salvation. But there is no salvation like the salvation that Jesus offers. The salvation of Christ is the greatest salvation it's the greatest deliverance and the salvation that Jesus offers is superior salvation in this life and in the world to come as a believer you shouldn't envy anyone because the salvation that Jesus gives us when you're saved by Jesus you're saved to the utmost I wouldn't leave this discipline and go into any other doctrine in the world. All the rest of them can have their salvation because I'm in the one where you get saved to the utmost. Bible says, Brother Rick, the Bible says, to the utmost, Jesus saved. Praise the Lord. See, when you get saved through Jesus, you're saved. Demons have nothing to offer. Ah, the root worker, the palm reader. Sister Mary, you, you drive past the palm reader. Go past the root worker. Keep, keep going past the crack house. These things have nothing to offer because you have the best. How many realize that you're in the greatest movement there is? Praise the Lord. I, there's, no, there's no point in a Jehovah's Witness come trying to win me. I've, I, I've had them to try. It, I, it was amusing. 
was amusing that they come with that false doctrine trying to get me out of the sanctified church. Praise the Lord. They are the Seventh-day Adventists who believe that when we worship on Sunday and folk down the street open on Saturday, they believe when we worship on Sunday that we commit blasphemy. There is nothing blasphemous about gathering together on the Lord's day. Lifting your hands in the sanctuary and giving the God of the Bible the glory due to his name. I have, we have the greatest salvation. I wonder could I get about for just a few folk to shout, we have the best. Yes, sir. See, you got to know what you have. This is what he was trying to show those, those Hebrews. I know you're suffering, but you better know what you have. You better know what you have. If you, you choose the world over Jesus, you lose. You choose that girl over Jesus, you lose. Praise the Lord. You choose the, the sports world. You choose the entertainment industry. You choose whatever over Jesus, you lose. I want to tell you, my Christian brother, who pledged to go Mason, and you got on your knees, and you said that you were a lost traveler in search of the light. Now, if you were saved, and then you claimed that you were lost just to be a part of the Freemasons, you lose because you, had, you already had salvation. You had the greatest why would I pledge when I've already made a pledge? I already told Jesus that it would be all right if he changed my name. So why then would I go and uh, go and join something else, something less than, less than, less than what I'm already in? Most folk don't want crystal. Most folk don't want less than. Most people want, at least they want greater than. But, but, but see, when it comes to Jesus, there is no greater than. Everything is less than. See, Jesus, I view Jesus like the Jews view Zion. Hallelujah. You won't read anywhere in the Bible where they went down to Zion. It's always up. Because to the Jews, Zion is the top. Hallelujah. It's always up. Well, I got Jesus. And, and, and in being saved and filled with Jesus, that means we're always up. Look at somebody and high five them and tell them, right, we have the best. Now, now, if you're not saved, you can't say that. But you, you need to recognize today, born again Christians, don't you give this up. Why would you give up? Why would you sell your birthright for a morsel of me. Why give up the best to get something less than the best? Hallelujah. That's what he's saying to him. And why was it the best? He gives the credentials for this religion. He gives the credential for this salvation. One of the reasons he said that it was the best, amen, that it was great, it was the greatest. Ali called himself the greatest, but Jesus is the greatest. Christianity is the greatest. Why is it the greatest? Praise the Lord. Number one is because it was first began to be spoken of by the Lord. Hallelujah. I know the angels and Moses gave you the law, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Luke 19 and 9, and Jesus said unto them, This day is salvation come to this house. Amen. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. You see, the law was already in place when Jesus said this day. Hallelujah. Moses had already been read when Jesus said this day. The Sanhedrin was already there when Jesus said this day. The world of Judaism was already in place and they were still offering sacrifices on the altar when Jesus said this day. And that's what John meant when John saw the real sacrifice. John said we've been offering billions of sacrifices down through the years. But one day John was preaching and said uh, there's one coming after me who is mightier than I. 
And uh, John said, I'm not even worthy to bear his shoes. And uh, while he was preaching, he looked yonder way. And here comes Jesus. And uh, I heard John say, behold, look over there. Here comes the Lamb of God. He comes to take away the sins of the world. In other words, this is the one that I've been telling you about. Look at the way he walks. Look at the way he carries himself. He's bringing us something unlike anything we've ever seen before. Moses talked about him. The prophets talked about him. John said, we're looking at him. Good God Almighty and saints, I'm glad that he's coming back again. Thank you, Jesus. He's coming back to get us. Said Jesus came and Jesus spoke of this great salvation. Hallelujah. He's the son of David. Luke 1 and 69 says, and have raised up a, a, a horn of salvation for us in the house of of the of his servant David that horn of salvation that God raised up is Jesus Christ and then Luke 1 and 71 said that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of him of all that hate us I want you to know that he's still able even in this day and time to save you from the hands of your enemies. Somebody has enemies, oh Lord, but you can shout right now because he's greater than your enemies. For I heard Isaiah say, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, he said, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. For their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I'm glad that I serve a God who's greater than all my trials and he's greater than all my fears. The devil can't get me because Jesus is able to deliver me from the hands of my enemies. We serve the God. Isn't he good? Isn't he so good? I can see my enemies sitting all around waiting for me to starve to death. Mama, they're waiting for you to go down. And while your enemies are waiting for you to starve, I see God. He's just like the kitchen committee. He's just like Sister Johnson and Mother Morgan and those who serve in the kitchen committee for while they're waiting, just like Darlene, while they're waiting for you to go down, here comes Jesus preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies while they're waiting for you to starve to death. The Lord prepares a smorgasbord. Yeah! We serve a God. He's able. Well, yes, he is. He's able to deliver from your enemies. You ought to praise the Lord right now for his delivering power. Woo! to grab somebody by the hand and say he's able use your preaching ball yeah Woo! what a great salvation what a great salvation he will heal you he'll pick you up he'll turn you around he'll bring you out yeah you Jesus it's a great salvation it's a great salvation 
Jesus, he talked about it. But that's just one, that's just one reason. That is great. And then I heard him say, reason number two, it was confirmed in us by them that heard him. The writer said, Peter, James, John, the 12, all of them who heard Jesus, they were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They were eyewitnesses of his glory. And they went out and they began to preach to others and to tell them about Jesus. I remember as a young Christian, my mama took us to Southern Pines. We were at Brother Milton, I believe, at their house. And they pulled out, they pulled out an album. They had albums in those days. They pulled out an album and they played the album. The album was Andre Crouch Live at Carnegie Hall. While they were playing the album, a song came up that said this. Somebody told me of the joy that they had. And somebody told me that in sorrow they could be glad. And they told me that they were blind, but now they see. But I didn't think that it could be until it happened to me. When it happens to you, oh, oh, when it happens to you, you can't help but spread the word. You can't help but tell somebody else. Somebody here ought to just cry out. I've been born. I've been born again. Yeah. God, God, God bad those who heard Jesus. The next reason is great. Jesus spoke about it. Then those who heard Jesus, they spoke about it. Then God the Father got in it. I'm talking about this salvation. Bible says, and God bearing them witness with signs and wonders. Now upper room, we've seen the Lord heal the sick right here we've seen the Lord raise the dead right there we've seen the Lord dry up cancers we've seen the Lord we've seen signs we've seen wonders I know he's real I'm glad I'm saved how many have seen enough to know that Jesus is the best thing. How many have seen enough to know that there is no other God, that there is no other name, that there is no other power than the power of Jesus. If you've seen enough, if you've felt enough, you ought to praise him. Shout like you know, shout like you know. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. You can't tell it. Let me tell it what he's done for me. Hallelujah. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Seen too many things. Worked too many miracles. This is why I get in trouble when I try to protect the sanctity of this house. Because I've seen demons cast out right here. 
I've seen sicknesses dry up in here in the DNA, the DNA of this altar. In the DNA of this altar, the demon DNA, cancer DNA, sickness DNA, hallelujah, where the devil was conquered, where the devil was knocked about, there's the sweat from the saints that have been poured out on the altar. Good God Almighty, we have so much proof. And not only did God the Father, Jesus spoke about it. They that heard Jesus, they preached about it. God gave them signs and wonders. And number four, the Holy Ghost got involved. Look at the text. It says the Holy Ghost banned them witnesses, giving them gifts. How many have spiritual giftings? How many know that the Holy Ghost is active in your life? That the Spirit of God have given you a spiritual gift. For you ought to praise Him for your gift. You ought to praise Him for what He's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 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 with all of this, with all of this, the question is, with all this, how shall we escape? With all that I've just showed you, how are you going to neglect this? With all that I've just preached about, I went to the top. How high did I go, Rocky? Circle around. Did I go off the scale? Huh? Eight times. I meant to. Now, after all that, how are you going to... How you gonna neglect it? How you gonna neglect it? How you gonna neglect this? So then, therefore, to keep from neglecting it, he says we ought to give Brother California the more earnest heed. That is, pay closer attention to the things that we have heard. Less at any time. For any reason, we should let it slip. Let it drain out. Lest at any time, we should let it get away. Because it's too good. It's too important. God went through too much to get it to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's, it's yours, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep you forever, and you're going to be over in glory when this life is over. Going to be over in glory. Oh, my God. Singing and shouting and rejoicing in Jesus from now on, and we're going to live forever and ever and ever, and all we had to do is accept him by faith and just serve him and hold to him. And when the winds of life blow and, and the devil come and pressures come, you just keep, you stand your ground and because you realize the value of it. And even before we die, while we're here, he brings us out. He lifts us up. Even if you're going through right now, you won't go through for long because he's going to fix it. If you're saying, preacher, it's taking too long, the Hebrew writer said, no, it's not taking too long you just have need of patience that after that you have done the will of God he says just slow your roll you're going to receive the promise or oh, in a little while he that shall come will come just slow down and whatever you do whatever you do don't slip don't let this go. The world is going to challenge us. You ought to tell the world, I'm not giving an inch. And you, and you, know, when, you know what you don't want to let it slip in? You don't want to let it slip in things that matter. See, sometimes we strain at a gnat, but we'll swallow a camel. Uh -uh. You, can't, you can't let it slip in things that matter. Glory to God. Glory to God. Today, the Lord told me to pray for you. To pray for the saints. 
to pray for the believers, to pray for the Christians who are under pressure. Some of you are the only saved person in your family. Some of you, you're the only saved person on your block. Some of you, the devil is coming after you, coming against you with everything he's got. With everything he's got. People go through things on the inside. People go through challenges. People, people, people. Marriages get tested. Hallelujah. Cables get strained. The Lord told me to tell you, I'm going to deliver you. But today's prayer, now listen to this. You might want to go back to your seat when I tell you. Today's prayer is not a prayer for deliverance. Today, today's prayer is a prayer that you don't let it slip. Why? Because he's going to deliver you. It's, it's, not that, it's not that we need to petition him to make a way. He's already promised to do that. He just says, what I want to know. Jesus said, what I want to know. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back speedily. He said, but what I want to know is, when I do get back, will I find faith on the earth? Because I'm coming. You have to worry about when I'm coming. Come on, Lord. Come. No, no. You have to pray that prayer. He's coming when he gets ready. The issue is, will we be ready? My eighth grade English teacher, Miss Campbell, I'll never forget her. You remember the, the, the good ones. The good ones are the ones that let you have it. I was sitting in class one day, not paying attention, and I asked Miss Campbell, what time is it? Miss Campbell's a tall, beautiful lady. African-American sister said to me, uh, Time will pass. The question is, will you? <laughs> I didn't ask Miss Campbell. I didn't ask Miss Campbell what time it is. Ever again, to this day. But there's such truth in that. Christ will deliver. God's going to come through for you. The Lord will bring you out. The question is, will you wait on him? Will you be faithful to him? Will you hold to his hand? Because he's already promised that he's going to hold to yours. Don't slip. Don't let it slip. Don't let your relationship with Jesus be neglected. Because you're going through a hard time. Pastor, I haven't read my Bible in six months because I'm going through. That's the reason to read it. That's the reason to read it. That's what he's saying. That's the reason. That's the reason to zero in on it. Hallelujah. Because times are tougher, that's when you want to turn to him. Because that's when he, that's when he's looking. That, Deacon Morgan, that's when he's looking. He, oh, he knows. Satan said that. Satan said, man, to the Lord. And, and, and you know what? He would, he would have won with some of us. Satan said to the Lord, um, no wonder Job is, of course Job is serving you. Of course he's faithful. Of course. Look at what he's done for you, what you've done for him. Look at what you've given him. Of course. Somebody tell you what you do. Let me touch him. Let me afflict him. I'll make him squeal. Let me afflict him. Let me do that. Let me take what you've given him. You made him rich. Everything has gone his way. I, of course he would serve. And that's what, that, 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 that happens. The Bible says in the book of Job, lo, these things happen oftentimes with men. These kind of proffers and things go on in the kingdom all the time. And more often than not, it's not that God failed the test. It's that we did. 
The test wasn't the thing you were going through. Sister Rayford, the test was, I bet you I can stop her from reading the Bible. That was the test. Now, I'll make a mess over here. See, it's, it's, it's the game. I'll mess up over here. She's been reading the Bible, been studying. I'm just using you. Reading the Bible, studying the Bible. Oh, I'll stop that. Just let me mess up over here. Guarantee you, she'll close it and get distracted. And all her time will go to this, and I'll pull her from her consecration. I'll pull her, pull her from her Bible study. Then you look around, and you neglected your Bible six months. Hadn't read since the last time. Oh, I'll get them out of church. Where you been, sister? Hadn't seen in a long time. Well, I've been going through. Where is staying home because of trouble written in the Bible? I hadn't found that book. I hadn't found that passage. And yet, it works. Most of the time, 99 times out of 100. He knows how to get us to neglect. Oh, my. Now, maybe a few more might want to come to the altar. If you know that you've been... You, that you've neglected. Come here. I'm, we're getting ready to pray. Come on. Be honest. Come on. Walk down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because once we start to pray now, you can't make your way down here. See, because then you're trying to do sleight of hand. But I don't want nobody to think anything. I wouldn't care what they thought. God is descending. Bless you. God is sending a serious word because that happens more often than we want. Bless you, my sister. The devil knows how. He knows how to get you off your game. He uses everything. Sickness, death, disease, praise the Lord, a bad report, family, you name it. Relationships, ties. He used all those things to test your commitment. Come close. We're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. Oh, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Lord, We come before you in this solemn hour praying in a normal tone. Glory to God. Hey, shake out our First of all, Lord, we repent for every time we've neglected this great salvation. We put that up front, Lord. We bring that before you right now. For every time, every time, every time life pulled us away. Oh, God, calls us to compromise, calls us to lower our standard, say things that we shouldn't have said, behave in ways that we should not have behaved in, do things that we know better than. And we did these things for convenience or for perceived necessity. We did them for pleasure. In the name of escapism. Various reasons. The reasons are many, but none are justified. So Lord, we repent for every time that we have been guilty of neglect of faith. Neglect of faith. Neglect of doctrine. Neglect of standards. We repent for it. We repent right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. But Father, we are grateful that we have not uh, allowed those instances of neglect to be translated in our lives 
of uh, us having full blown slipped away. For had we slipped, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you that we're yet saved. Thank you that we come bringing you, oh God, come bringing you something to work with. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lift our hands. We lift our voices. And we cry out to you, Lord. God, keep us, Lord. Lord, give us strength. Give us strength to hold even tighter. God, we pray for that anointing. God, we believe you to anoint us for everything. We want you to anoint us to give the more earnest heed. God, we're going to put forth our own effort in the name of Jesus. And Lord, where we fall short, God help us out. Hallelujah. If I stumble while I'm trying, don't be angry, but let me stay. For I'm willing to run on all the way. Thank you, Jesus. Stop the leak. Stop the leaks. Stop the leaks. We're not going to let our salvation little by little leak out. But God, we're drawing closer to you. We're drawing nearer to you. Because this thing is great. It's a, it's a wonder to be saved. It's a privilege to be born again. It's an honor to be in the army of the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for this great salvation. We thank you because you brought it. You brought it yourself. Hallelujah. Mary didn't give birth to an angel, but Mary gave birth to God the Son. You brought it. You wrapped yourself in flesh, born in a manger. Oh, Lord, you walk the dusty streets of Palestine, never went more than 200 miles from where you were born, died on the cross for our sins. God the Father raised you up the third day. When you got up, you said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Tell them something wonderful has come. Tell them that the Savior has brought salvation and you saved us from our sins. We stand here today on our way to heaven. We stand here today sanctified. We stand here today with our sins forgiven. And we stand here today with victory around the corner, with deliverance around the corner. The trial ain't gonna last long. Hallelujah. It won't rain always. In the name of Jesus, you are turning it. You are moving us to the front of the line. You are settling us. You are giving us Ebenezer's. You are blessing us going and coming. Lord, we want to do our part. We want to be Christians. We want to be the believers that you saved us to be. You saved us to be real. You saved us to be consistent. You saved us to hold on. Even in the time of rain, you saved us to hold on through the storm. You saved us to hold on through the fire. You promised that the flames would kindle upon us. Yes, Lord. So Jesus, we increase our grip. Jesus, we grab hold to the altar. We grab hold to the old way across. We grab hold to the Christian doctrine. We grab hold to the word of God. We grab hold to your
your holy name. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. We're not going anywhere. We're going to serve you. We're going to wait on you. We're going to serve you. We're going to live by faith. We're going to serve you. We're going to walk upright. We're going to serve you. Oh, oh Lord. You're God. You're good. You're worthy. You're coming again. Give us power not to slip away. Give us power just to hold on. Power to be real. Power to walk upright. Power ah, to live it every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, winter, spring, summer, and fall. January through December. Oh, keep us, Lord. Oh, give us strength, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Do it again. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to your name. Now, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We're giving the more earnest heed. I'm going home. How do you give the more earnest heed? I pay more attention. I go home and study what the pastor have taught. I attend church more regularly. I get in the prayer. I share my faith. Yes. I get to work. I give up my gossip buddies. I stop going to see them. I get out of that environment. Some of these losers, they'll keep you carnal. They have no spiritual power. All they talk is noise, but they have no anointing can't preach their way out of a paper bag. They have no anointing. You have to cut folk like that off so you can have your power and not slip. Glory to God. Glory. Somebody worship him right. Somebody worship him right now. Oh God. is doing something he's doing something on the altar for everybody who wants him to do something see you got to you got to sometimes sometimes I want to explain something to you sometimes it's intentional when I pray and I don't come down and lay hands some people do all the time and that's all right but let me tell you why I don't at times I need you to be able, as your pastor, see, I'm not a visiting evangelist. I need you to be able, as your pastor, to get into the presence of God on your own. See, you, you need to be able to do that. See, you need, see, see some of you, while the prayer is going, you're standing around looking with your arm full head looking at me. No, you need to be able to lock in. And you know why I'm like that? See, when the Lord saved me, nobody's hand was on me. So I got, I got mine different. I, I, Vicky, I had already set up a fortress that Ella Turner wasn't going to, he wasn't going to get through to me. And when I got to him, he told me, he said, you get on the altar, you talk to the Lord for yourself. And he, your daddy uh, went to pray for other folk. At that point, everything, 
including where I am right now, everything was on the line. What will I do? I opened my mouth and I said, save me, Jesus. And I felt nothing. And I said it again. Save me, Jesus. And again, I felt nothing. Then I heard a voice say to me, ask me and mean it. Then I said, save me, Jesus. And I felt Begin to break up up in here. Begin to break up all in my soul. Yes, sir. You got to, you got to know how to get in his presence. You got to get in his presence. You got to call him and mean it. For yourself get it for yourself come on come on come on let him touch you let him let him let him let him let him i won't be with you always jesus christ is the one the same yesterday today and forever pray the lord if as time go i'll get old and can't do it but jesus Blessings of God be on you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go to your seats. Praise in the Lord.